Well, hello and welcome to the inaugural episode of Tea Time, Tiffany University. We call it Tea Time to you. My name is Russ Snyder, voice of the Dragons, alongside head men's golf coach Darby Rogo. Coach Rogo, well, we've talked about doing this for quite some time, and well, here it is. Let's get going. We finally uh, put this together, a uh, chance for you and I to sit down and talk about golf, and uh, Really excited about doing this. Well, we're out here live at Shell Sharkers Restaurant located at 224 and South State Route 53 right here in Tiffin, Ohio. Our buddy Scott Turner, owner proprietor of the restaurant, was graciously acceptable about our coming out here and doing the uh, program. So we got to give Scott a big shout out and his fine staff out here at Shell Sharkers for welcoming us in here on a Tuesday morning. And it's uh, pretty cool he's having us out here. Uh, Scott's just a great guy. You know, glad to have him back in Tiffin, uh, just taking over ownership here. It's going to be a lot of great things, a lot of great changes here at Shell Sharkers. And, you know, to give us a chance to be here. I mean, I just feel, you know, thankful that he's a good friend like that. Well, all we had to do was mention golf, and he was accepting it's true, it. Very <laughs> That's true. That's all yes. it took. Well, let's tell the folks a little bit about what we're going to be doing here with our program. We're going to talk Tiffany University golf. We're going to talk GLIAC Conference golf. We're going to talk college golf. We're going to talk PGA golf. We're just pretty much going to talk golf any way that you want to look at it, see it, the big picture of golf. We're going to talk about it. Yeah, I'm excited because, I mean, I obviously get to talk about my golf program and my players, and, and uh, you know, anytime I get a chance to do that, it, it's a good thing for us. Uh, but also, you know, through you and I talking, it's a chance to us to just talk golf in general, talk mm -hmm. about the PGA Tour, talk about the LPGA. We'll talk about the women's golf program and Blake DeBrain, the head coach there, and the great job that he's doing. Um, just to have a chance to talk about golf, something that I'm also very passionate about, is going to be a lot of fun, and I think it's going to be something that our viewers will enjoy. Yeah, it's, a, it's a it's hard to believe we're talking about golf when you wake up this morning and the snow is coming down. We're looking outside at the river here, outside the big windows at Shell Shuckers and seeing the snow still on the ground. But it's great to be talking about golf because it really gets us thinking about spring. And, you know, we're going to be uh, taking questions from listeners. Mm -hmm. We're going to be taking questions from viewers. If you'd like to email us questions, you can email them to me at SnyderR at Tiffin.edu. We'll do, close our segments each and every week with our uh, tips from Darby with uh, answering your questions. And, don't really have any questions from folks this week, but at the end of the program, maybe I'll throw some questions at you that maybe the hacker like myself may have as, you know, they work their way through the winter and start thinking about getting the sticks out and getting everything polished up and ready to go and get ready to hit the links here come, uh, come hopefully in about a month. Yeah, it'll be fun. And uh, you know, I'm excited that hopefully we'll get some uh, fan interaction and uh, start getting some emails and some questions. And, uh, you know, more than anything else, one thing that I enjoy about being a golf uh, instructor is helping others. You know, I, I think the key is this is a game that is, is not easy. Mm. A lot of people people want to learn to play it. Uh, it takes a lot of patience. So if I can help one person get a little bit better, then, you know, that is a great thing for me. Well, that's all about the teaching aspect. You're a coach, you're a teacher, and, you know, you love to teach the game, you love to play the game, and you've had some great experiences on golf courses. You've got some great kids playing golf for you. So you mentioned uh, Blake and the, the women's program. Let's talk a little bit about the program at Tiffin University. You guys uh, have your own facility there on campus. You have the Heminger Center that you can get into a little bit in the field turf room there in the wintertime. But you guys are getting ready for leave for your first trip here coming up at the end of the week. Uh, end of the week, you know, I'll take the, uh, the men out to uh, Las Vegas. It's our first tournament of the year hosted by the University of Missouri-St. Louis. We're really looking forward to it for two reasons. One, I'm ready to start, you know, playing. I'm yeah. ready for the guys to start playing. We've been working very hard this winter, but also, too, the weather out there right now has been great. Mm -hmm. uh, as beautiful as this view is to look out the window here at the river at uh, Shell Shuckers, I'm ready for some sunshine. I'm I want to see green. See grass. Yes. Want, <laughs> and I'm ready for short sleeves. It'll be fun. I, uh, I joked to the guys. I said, you know, um, we're going to be in the desert. It's going to get cold at night, though, so mm -hmm. we're going to have to still pack all of our travel gear. But I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to see who gets sunburned first. Yeah, no doubt. And you guys will be out there in Las Vegas. And some different challenges playing golf in an atmosphere like that as compared to here in Ohio. I'm sure air is a little bit thinner out there. Mm -hmm. The ball travels a little bit different. You kids prepared for that kind of situation? We are. Uh, you know, yesterday uh, we sat down and we broke down the golf course. You know, with the facilities that we have, we're able to bring up the GPS of the golf course, you know, through the iPad. And we broke down hole by hole and, and started started to talk about our game plan and one of the things that I tried to stress with the players yesterday was our mental focus and our course management right now are more important than our physical abilities mm -hmm. and we haven't been out to play yeah. you know we, we've been hitting balls at the range we've been working on our short game inside the Hemminger Center we've been, been doing video inside of the, uh, our practice facility but we haven't played the game yet so we're going to be a little bit rusty and I said what we need to be focused on is our mental approach to the game it has to far outweigh our physical this weekend it's our course management simple things like uh, making sure we're in we're in play off the tee mm -hmm. if we miss a green because it's going to happen don't short side yourself you know having a game plan the golf course that we're playing um, is in the mountains it's going to be firm this time of year for, compared to what we're used to. Mm -hmm. We're going to get some roll. 
we're going to get some carry, um, and we're only playing about 6,900 yards. I talked to uh, the coach at uh, Missouri St. Louis. He's a really good friend of mine. His name's Troy Halterman, and Troy said we're not going to make the golf course super difficult because everybody is going to be out there for the, playing for yeah. the first time. Mm -hmm. And the tournament field is fantastic. Um, 18 teams. Mm. You know, UMSL is ranked in the country. Nova Southeastern is top 10. West Florida is top 10. Um, there will be some teams from the Great Lakes region there as well. Um, so it's it's a good tournament field. Last year we were able to finish fifth at this event. Mm. We can do something like that again. It'll be a great start for us. Now, how do you handle that mental approach, especially on that first tee for these kids? Because just the inner excitement's got to be boiling over just to get up there on the first tee with the sun shining back out on the golf course. How are you able to teach these kids to keep that emotion under control, especially on that first tee? Well, what it really is going to come down to is first is our, our mental approach and you know having a little bit of personal maturity. Um, I'm going to be excited, so I know the players are going to mm -hmm. be excited. And what we talk about different process from a mental standpoint, going through your pre-shot routine, you know, really controlling your breathing and, and understanding that this is something you've done before. I know you're going to be excited, but let's make sure our warm-up routine gets us into a good rhythm. Uh, timing is so important in golf, yeah. and so if we can find a good routine to start before we even get to the first tee, hopefully those first tee jitters will be taken away. Um, we'll do some things the night before with uh, some visual aids uh, to get the guys thinking about what they want to do. We do simple things like the night before from a psychological standpoint, we play the golf course in our head. Mm -hmm. You know, see yourself actually hitting that good tee ball to start the day off and, and feel how good that is to get into a rhythm. And it may sound kind of hokey, but from a psychological standpoint, you know, your brain is such a strong sure. muscle. If we can go through that process before we even get there, when the moment comes, it'll feel familiar to you. Absolutely, yeah. The mental approach is a, is a huge obstacle, especially for, we're talking about 18, 19, 20-year-old kids. It's a huge obstacle for me in, in my early 30s. But uh, for, <laughs> me too. For, yeah, for, the, for these kids, I mean, be able to, that's a huge advantage to be able to walk through it in your, you know, the visual aids that you talked about. You talked about the GPS and the iPad. That's something that's in the world of golf is a, is very new. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge tool for these kids to be able to use. And for really for anybody when they're going to play a golf course they're familiar with, that's a huge tool and it gives you a nice advantage before you get out there to take away a lot of that unfamiliarity. It is. And in, in we, when we went through our meeting yesterday, everyone has a yardage book they're given and they create the whole in their yardage book so they have their own visual aid so when we go through the practice round and we see off the first tee for example they're uh, at, at Paiute Golf Club we're playing the Snow Mountain course there's a bunker up the left hand side it's only a 388 yard par 4 short par 4 uh, there's a bunker about 260 out on the left mm. when we get to the golf course they know that's there mm -hmm. and we've already talked about the fact that any at this time of year any par 4 under 400 yards might as well just hit 3 wood get in play yeah because our identity, like I told you, I want to be a team that can chip and putt that is very good inside 100 yards. Mm -hmm. Well, I told the guys, look, if you hit a three-wood normal distance, you're going to have 120 into the green off the first tee. As if we're not capable of hitting greens from 120, then all of this is just a waste of time because yeah. we should be doing something else. Yeah, and being straight off the tee. I mean, being long is great, mm -hmm. but being straight is uh, so much more important. Uh, it, it, think about this. If you're in 18 fairways, your chances of hitting 18 greens increases incredibly. Mm -hmm. If you're hitting from behind trees, you're hitting out of the rough, you're hitting out of the desert, which could happen. Sure. You know, hitting greens then becomes more difficult. The more greens you hit, the more birdie opportunities you have, the more birdie chances you have. And I look at it this way. We, we have a, a, a goal of trying to hit 12 greens around and then converting one third of those. Well, that's four birdies. Yeah. If you make four birdies in your round, the chances are you're going to shoot 75 or better. Mm -hmm. Statistically, it, yeah, and that's 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 decent scoring mm -hmm. for oh, sure for us. If we if we can go out and we can post two scores sub three hundred, we'll be in a great position. Is this course similar to what we saw in the match play course here over last weekend, where once you get off the, it's like green and then desert? Um, not really. Uh, this is more of a resort style course, okay. and so there are a lot of desert uh, between the holes. Um, the greens are somewhat smaller. Uh, fairways are very big. Uh, very few hazards. Very few bunkers around the uh, greens. When we looked at it on, on GPS on the, on the video, there are very few greens that have a lot of bunkering. So um, what it is, is it's, there's large areas that you can land the ball in the fairway, but the greens are only about 24 yards on average. So there's smaller greens with a lot of mounding around the greens. Okay. So where we miss is going to be very important because you don't want to miss short side because with our short game right now, even though we've been working on it, it's not 
we're not going to be at our best. Mm-hmm. I, I get that. And that's what I try to get the guys to understand is expectations. Don't expect to play poorly, but don't expect to be perfect either. It's yeah. managing that, managing those emotions. You always go, whenever we talk golf, you always go back to that course management thing. Mm-hmm. And that, that what you were just talking about there with the, with the approach shots is exactly in that course management, being smart off the tee mm-hmm. and giving yourself a chance to score. Right. And, and I, like I've always said to you, greens and regulations to, is regulation to me is the most important sure. statistic. The more greens you hit, the more birdie chances you have, the less swings you have to make. And so I, I, we work, sometimes we'll work backwards. What club do you like to hit into the green? Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you're very comfortable with your nine iron, then give yourself as many nine irons as possible. You know, if you're very comfortable with your gap wedge, that's 120 yards. Get to that yardage as many times as you can. We want you to feel comfortable. Um, course management is so important because at this level, they all have skill. Mm-hmm. It's now what separates the good players from the great players are the guys who make the fewest mental mistakes. Absolutely. And, you know, I never thought about that before. You know, when you know, I'm that golfer who gets with his buddies on the weekend and go out and, you know, you play 9 or 18, whatever you have time to do. And you don't think about what is that club that gives me the, the, the safest shot mm-hmm. into the green? You think, you know, you play it from the tee to the green. Mm-hmm. But playing it from the green back makes so much sense. Mm-hmm. But I never talked to anybody about that or made that point. And now that you say that, it just makes a world of sense, I think, to any level of golfer. Yeah. Well, and it goes back to um, those of us that play. Everybody has a club they like. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and <laughs> I think, that, you know, the key is being mature enough to understand that not every hole you have to hit driver. You know, there are, you know, you play Mohawk. You know, I've actually had our guys play the entire golf course without using a driver, and you'll see scores will improve mm. because they're in play more often. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there are some holes on the golf course, even when I play it, I don't want to hit a driver. I hit an iron off the tee. Yeah. You know, I cut the a grass in different heights for a reason. There's, there's, yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and for example, number 11 at Mohawk, I very rarely hit driver off the tee there. And like, well, it's a par five, it's a par five. I don't go for that green in two. I don't hit a driver long enough that I can get there in two. So I hit a three iron off the tee, hit another five iron up to 100 yards, and get up and down from there as yeah. best I can because that is a better chance for me. I'll make more fives and lower than I will sevens and eights yeah. when I do that. Well, that makes total sense. Uh, we're talking to uh, Coach Darby Rogo. You're watching in t- uh, Tea Time TU, our weekly program about golf and Tiffany University and golf in general. We're going to be visiting a lot of courses over the summer. Hopefully get a chance to play some of the signature co- holes and some of the great public courses around uh, the Tiffin Seneca County and beyond area. Let's talk a little bit about your golfers now. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about the kids you have on your team. Um, you can also talk about Blake's uh, kids as well. Okay, well, this weekend the five players that are traveling to Las Vegas are going to be uh, fifth-year senior Corey Martinez, who has been a tremendous leader for us, not just this year, but even in going into last year. As I mentioned in uh, Dragon Radio a couple weeks ago, Corey hasn't left the lineup the last two years. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is really, he, he's got a great golf swing. He's left handed. He's the only left we have on the team, but his swing is, is, is beautiful. And, you know, he's not a real big guy, but he really moves the golf ball. He's got good short game. And the last two years, his mental maturity has caught up to his physical abilities and he's been extremely solid for us last spring when we made that run to make super regionals yeah. he was crucial in that i mean he was he was shooting 74 or better every event and playing out of the four spot for us and really was a, a, a big push for us to you know be ranked fifth in the region um so i'm excited for Corey. this is being his last season and this will be the first time. Last year he didn't make the trip to Vegas. This year he will. So I'm excited about that. Uh, junior Tyler Moranville, who had mm-hmm. played the one for us in the fall. Um, and I've talked to you about him many a times. Yep. He is as talented as any player that we've had. You know, his physical abilities are as, as good as anybody. Um, he just had a tough fall. And I think part of it was he, there was he felt a lot of pressure moving into that one spot. Uh, he's still, you know, he's still a young kid. And so, but I, he's worked so hard this winter, and I am so excited about this spring because I think he's really going to have a, a, a stellar spring. Um, John Tidenberg, who ended up having the best fall overall for us, who's a sophomore out of Canton, Ohio. John is just steady, not a big guy. He's a little muscular build, but, you know, if we had a contest so you could hit the ball down the middle of the fairway the most, he's going to win every okay. time. Very good short game. Not long off the tee, but very accurate with all of his clubs. He has a nice compact swing, makes very few errors. He is only going to get better over time for us, and he is going to be a, a great player in his next, not just this spring, but his next two years as well. Um, also sophomore Luke Schlischer, who is our wild card. Luke is, you know, the, the class clown. Uh, he's great. <laughs> Um, right now, he's got his hair grown out a little bit. You know, I'm not happy with it. It's really, it really looks like a young Jonah Hill. Um, 
you know, but he is a, our, he's our class clown. He he keeps the mood light. And and with Luke, we're gonna get a 65 or an 85 out of Luke, and, and hopefully we can make that down to a 77. But I mean, the kid just makes birdies, mm. and uh, but he also makes he makes mistakes as well, and yeah. he shows his maturity and his immaturity all at the same time. Uh, he's very passionate, uh, great. Uh, player, um, kind of a homemade swing, um, but you know this is a young man that is freshman year, tied for medalist in the first regional uh, last spring in Wisconsin. He shot two under at the first GLIAC event in the fall. Um, had a, a round where he shot four or five under at GLIACs, um, but he follows that up. With, you know he's he's a roller coaster yeah. guy. He's almost a perfect four man because. We know we're going to get the score we're going to use from him or a score we can throw out. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he's always fun to take on the road, though, because he, he, he's just a great kid. <laughs> um, and then rounding out the, uh, the fifth spot is going to be a freshman. His name is Brett Green. Uh, Brett from Alma, Michigan, uh, was a state champion in high school. Um, and uh, this young man is he, – he, he may be – if it's not Tyler Moranville, it may be Brett, maybe the best athlete on our team. Uh, still can dunk a basketball, so can Tyler. Um, they both. Can you? I, 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 I still can. You know, people don't believe me, but I still can. Yeah. We, we might have to have Darn a show it. where we prove I that. I can anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, not very hard, though. It, it, <laughs> and and if, if, uh, I've got to be really stretched out. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Brett is just not only is a tremendous athlete, he is a competitor. And it's great because um, as a freshman, he's got a little chip on his shoulder. Yeah. And, and uh, I like that. He comes in. He's very competitive. I think that he is going to be down the road a young man that will be a tremendous leader for us because he brings it every day. Whether we're in the swimming pool or we're at the range, I mean, he, the amount of energy that he has, if I could bottle that and sell it, you and I would both be millionaires oh, wow. right now. He is, I'm really excited about him. And then, you know, those are the five that are going to uh, Las Vegas. But, you know, Tyler Sheppens is a freshman from Canada who has a great golf swing. He's just not found himself yet. You know, that freshman year can be tough. We've got some other good players. Uh, Tyler Reese, who's a junior for us, has played in and out of the lineup the last couple years. So we've got a good core. I'm really excited about the recruiting class that we're bringing in. I obviously can't talk about them yet. Sure. But uh, the class that we have coming in, is is going to be very talented so our future looks very good excellent and then blake with the uh with the women's program mm -hmm. he does a great job at them as well well i mean blake has you know improved the the number of players and the quality of players in his two years of recruiting i think that he is going to see a lot of success in the next few years. He's got some good young girls. We talked about Lauren Harris and her improvement. You know, the leadership that Abby Martin has shown. There's some good young uh, freshmen that he has. I know that his recruiting class for next year is also very good. I mean, Blake is such a good recruiter. He's got a girl from Florida coming up. So, wow. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a Take him off the coast in Florida right? and Northwest Ohio. I mean, if you can get a girl from Florida to Northwest Ohio, you're doing something right. So wow. we're excited for what he's doing with the women's side of things as well. Well, the GLIAC Conference is a bear in all the sports. We know that. I mean, it doesn't matter which sport you're talking about men's women's it doesn't matter it's just an absolute tear and i'm sure that the golf is just well, the without same. a doubt you know and i think of all the uh uh gliac sports golf is the one that probably has the the, the least amount of parity i mean every tournament somebody can win you mm. know i mean you get into football you know there's three or four schools in the gliac that are always going to be tough yeah. to beat you get into basketball there's a three or four at the top and then there's the middle there really is no middle of the pack in golf it's Every event. I mean, this this fall, um, Northern Michigan had a great fall, and you know they're a school that you wouldn't you think. Don't really think you know, yeah. and, and they just got a new head coach. A, a really good friend of mine has just accepted that job, and uh, he's going to start with them on March first. And you know, I know he's going to do a good job. And they, you know, they're going to be under snow until probably May, probably. There. And, and uh, but they come to compete every weekend, and. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great coaches in the GLIAC, a lot of good friends that I've made, you know, the last few years. And, and uh, so we know that every GLIAC event, if you don't come ready to play, you know, you're going to get it handed to you. You know, you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. It every, sounds like every, every time weekend. You, yep, every weekend you get out on the course, somebody's going to bring it. So mm -hmm. if you want to compete for the top spot, you better bring it as well. Exactly. All right. Well, let's talk a little PGA Tour. Well, I'm more than happy to discuss that with you. Sir. All right. Who's your favorite golfer? Well, I love Tiger Woods. Yes. I know that uh, you know there's people that like him. There's people that don't like him. I myself, I, I think he's a tremendous golfer. I'm a big fan. I of think well. he he does a uh, a lot of good things for the game. Obviously, um, 
but I, I, I love watching him play. You know, when uh, I go out to Firestone every year, and I was there this year when he made, you know, had that incredible round, and I uh, watched him play all 18 holes. And when he's at his best, I mean, there's nobody better. And it's just, it's exciting. I, I love what he does. Let's talk a little bit about the match play last week. Mm -hmm. And boy, it doesn't get much more exciting than that final match there to decide the championship. Well, that was just fantastic golf yeah. really early in the season to get people excited about golf. You couldn't ask for much more than that. You know, what's unbelievable is, is that event is such a great event because it's so unique to the PGA Tour. You know, a year ago at Dove Mountain, they, they have snow. Mm -hmm. And Henrik Stenson is running around the golf course doing his thing. <laughs> and, and this year, you know, I fill out my bracket just for fun. You know, don't want to yeah. violate any, any NCAA rules. My bracket was done after day one. Yeah. I mean, the guys <laughs> that I thought were playing well, you know, I got Jimmy Walker going deep and out of nowhere, du Dubasan. You know, and a lot of people don't know the name, but he's a top 30 player in the world. Yeah. And they talk about how he, what a great short game he has, and that's the key to being successful. Um, we're going to hear a lot more of him. He is a really, really good player. And he's got, they talk about how eccentric he is. And, and, and you know, to have that m mindset or that mentality in golf actually is a good thing because for him, it, it allows him to just go out and do his thing. Um, you know, I had Zach Johnson going all the way because I know how well he's been playing. You saw what happened with him. Mm -hmm. Jason Day is a young man that, you know, obviously, uh, is a very good golfer, but when it comes to big events, that guy shows up. Yes, he does. He can Absolutely. play. And he, he is he is going to have a – I think he's going to have a good year, but he's going to have a great career. You know, five, six, seven years from now, we're going to talk about – he's going to win a major. I, that, I'm, I'll predict it now. And he is going to be, you know, talked about as a guy that really had a great uh, career in the PGA Tour. Well, you talk about – you brought up majors and – the Masters will be coming up here before we know it, and a lot of uh, the golfers happy with the Eisenhower tree getting uh, getting knocked down. Well, you know, uh, I was able to go to Augusta a few years ago. I took my dad for his birthday, and uh, we went down, and, and I can't even – I can't even put into words how amazing that place is. They do everything correct. I mean, I think I've told you this story. We saw a divot on the golf course, and the divot was beautiful. I mean, it, uh. it is the most amazing venue that I've ever been able to attend and to be able to do it with my dad was very special no doubt. that's fantastic and uh you know the eisenhower tree you get to see it you know you know the history of the golf course well, in case folks don't understand why it's called the eisenhower tree why don't you explain president that? eisenhower used to hit it when he, when he played there he would hit that tree off the tee almost every time and he claimed he was going to come <laughs> down one night in, in, in the darkness and chop it down because he got tired of hitting his drive that's an awesome into that story. tree and uh so now that you know the snow the ice storm that we had that, mm -hmm. or they had i should say that, that took it down you know a lot of but don't be surprised. Yeah. By April, there'll be a new tree there. They'll, they'll, there'll be something there. You know, Augusta <laughs> National doesn't mess around. I mean, uh, but just the history of the, the tournament. Um, obviously, last year's Masters was so crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, Tiger with the penalty on the drop. Um, oh, I forgot you know, about the, that. After ricocheting it off the flag stick, and he was on a hot streak the year before, Phil, um, you know, made the, the his – two or three eagles almost in a row. Uh, the finish the last few years, Bubba's shot, and then Adam Scott breaking through. I mean, if you love golf, you love that tournament because every year there's this drama that you can't script it. Yeah. It's just it's awesome. And, and to see players like uh, Cabrera, who you don't see a whole lot, but when it comes to the majors, he's in it. Jason yeah. Day is another guy mm -hmm. like that. You know, just it's so exciting, and that's what I can't wait for is, is, this, is the season to start, not just for us because, you know, that's fun for me, but golf season in general and sure. getting out and going to tournaments and, and watching them on TV and following your favorite players. And, you know, Dustin Johnson is just exciting. He could have a big year. I mean, there's so many good guys on the PGA Tour right now. There's so many so good young fun. players too. Oh, my gosh, you know, yes. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. the, the range of talent on the PGA Tour goes from, you know, 20 years old up to – you know, guys well, who are I mean, playing the, the big tournaments from the senior tour. It's amazing. It, right. I mean, you think about it. Tiger's at a point now where he's considered old. Yeah. He's getting into the later years of his career, and he still is the guy to watch. You know, I, I talk about this in my uh, uh, business golf class and some of the other classes I teach, you know, for sports marketing. You know, t they'll say Tiger moves the needle, and I'll disagree. Tiger is the needle. No. Yeah. You know, what he does matters. And, and uh, But Phil Mick Mickelson is still – getting out there and, and getting it done and but there's so many good young players and you have it like a Dubasan who comes out of you know and essentially mm -hmm. comes out of nowhere I mean he's a top 30 guy but I don't think anybody in the on the planet had their bracket completed Probably. with him in yeah. the finals going 23 holes against Jason Day uh -huh. I mean and some of the shots that he hit unbelievable yeah and some of these great young players not only Americans but worldwide, oh, worldwide. is such a yep. great very talented game worldwide. It's, it's, what's great about golf is it does hit 
across the globe, mm -hmm. you know, and I got to witness that last year when I went to Scotland. Mm -hmm. And just to play the game at the home of golf and, and to play the old course and to talk to the locals and just the passion they have for the game. I mean, what's crazy about that whole trip, <laughs> Russ, is we were there for 10 days. I didn't hit a single range ball. Yeah. You don't want to. You want yeah. to go out and play. I said, you know, I asked one of the starters one day, I said, is there a driving range? He says, I lad. He goes, we don't hit range balls. We go play the game. Yeah, you're here to golf. He goes, get out there and play. And I said, okay, all right. Yeah, let's do you it. know, and everybody walks and everybody's in shape and, and, you know, just the history of the game and to see where it started and where it is today. And I have the greatest job in the world. Yeah. I really do. To be a, surrounded by golf every day in the manner that I am. I mean, I don't have to deal with members, so <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty good gig. And that's a be another beautiful thing about golf is the courses. I mean, the, the old courses that were built and some of the new courses that are being mm -hmm. built. There's something for everybody. Right. Some, some people like the traditional. Some people love the new courses. Mm -hmm. But you'll find something you love on any of the great golf Well, courses. and that's what makes golf, again, very special is a football field is always 100 yards long. A soccer field is always the same Mm -hmm. with in the same distance a golf course nothing is ever the same yeah you know you're gonna have courses you love to play you're gonna have courses that they are just too difficult for mm -hmm. you and you think about all the great golf courses just surrounding us here in tiffin yeah. you know if you want a course that's very challenging you have an option if you want a course that you can go have fun and you can be relaxed you have options and that's what i think is special about golf is that every golf course is different Everything has its own challenges, and everything brings its own unique style, and, and that's what makes golf really cool. And, and another thing about it as well is you brought up how you went with your father to the Masters. I go out and play golf with my son. Mm -hmm. My daughter is sitting right over there. She's four years old. In a few years, I'll be able to go out and play with her. Right. This is something we can share for the next 20, 30, 40 oh, years. Sure. That's just fantastic. Oh, sure. I mean, I remember. I can't go out and play football with my son no, in 20 years. No. But we can darn sure go to the golf no, course. No, my dad does not want to play one-on-one -on -one basketball <laughs> with me. But he will take his strokes, and we'll go to the golf course whenever he can. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think about it years ago. Um, you know, my, my uh, mom's dad was from Scotland. And he was a huge golfer. And I remember on his 89th birthday playing golf with him. Yeah. You know, we went out. And we actually played Red Hawk. Is it when it opened up? And you played Red Hawk at '89. He was in. Wow. Uh, it was a long day. I'm I, sure. I said, Grandpa, I will give you golf ball. Stop looking for them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, you know, it was it was great to be able to experience that with him. And you know, I look forward to doing that with my my kids. And, and uh, you know, I have. You know, friends that I play golf with that, you know, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I can get a text message and, they, you know, I will drop what I'm doing to go play golf with them because that's the time I want to spend with that person. Well, I know, uh, Coach, we're getting uh, close to our 30 minutes here of our mm -hmm. program. So let's um, remind the folks that at the end of the program each and every week, we're going to be taking your emails and answering your questions. If you'd like tips from Coach about your golf swing, about, you know, this, that, or the other, anything and everything you want to talk about. The PGA Tour, local golf courses, anything you want to ask us about, you can email me at SnyderR, it's S-N-Y-D-E-R-R -R at tippin.edu. Do you want to give your email address as well? It's uh, drogo, first initial, last name, D-R-O-G-G-O-W at tiffin.edu. Please email us if got questions. We'd look, love to help you out as much as we can. You can find us all over social media as well, Facebook, Twitter, mm -hmm. and uh, and you can find out more information on Tiffin University Golf by going to GoTiffinDragons.com and clicking on the men's golf link or the women's golf link as well. Um, you want to mention the golf outing here as Correct. well coming up here in the yep. summer. Well, the you know, Tiffin University Athletic Department is going to have their uh, – annual golf outing at uh, Mohawk Golf and Country Club. It's our biggest event of the year. Uh, it's a blast it's, last year. It's so much fun. And it's one of those things I love being the tournament director for because I love to be able to put on an event that people walk away shaking their head just like, wow, that was awesome. Yeah. You know, we have tremendous sponsors. We'll have tremendous sponsors again this year. The tea gifts, the dinner, the, you know, from everything that we do, you know, I, I will argue with anybody that's one of the best you know, golf scramble events, not just in Northwest Ohio, but in the state. And uh, I just want everybody to come out and experience it because I, I enjoy helping the athletic department and development offices at Tiffany University put that on for our, our, our alumni, friends, and fans. Well, you are an incredibly busy guy that day. That is it is. For I, sure. but you know what? I love it. Well, you know, I, I, I interviewed tons of people last year. I went out on the course and talked to people on the course as well as the clubhouse, and not one person had a negative thing to say. Everybody was, had smiles on their face. That's great. Everybody Let's was having a going. great time. <laughs> and I'm sure that just about everyone of them, as long as their schedule will allow, we'll be back this year. I hope so. I know that's it's a fun day, and uh, it's a great way to support Tiffany University and the athletic department. All right, final uh, thing here coach uh, we'll pretend like i have an email here from sure from um from scott from shell shuckers a guy getting ready to go out and get his first few rounds of the golf season mm -hmm. what's a good tip for them to try to get their swing 
ready for the start of the golf season? Well, I think, you know, this time of year, we've all we've all got cabin fever. We've mm-hmm. been stuck inside. Whether you've been putting on the carpet in the, uh, you know, family room or maybe made a few swings in the garage, I think the first thing that we, we remind every amateur is go in with realistic expectations. You know, you haven't been playing. This is not an easy game. Um, going with expectations, don't go out and think that you're going to shoot your lowest round of the year the first couple yeah. weeks or even the first, you know, month of the season. Um, build slowly. The, the, I think the one thing that a lot of amateurs need to remember is, is when they make a golf swing, stay on balance and stay in rhythm. We swing too hard. Mm-hmm. We, we, we are too aggressive with the golf club. We, we, we slash at the golf ball. We need to worry about making a good, smooth swing and letting the golf ball get in the way. Yeah, a lot of people play summer softball mm-hmm. and things. It's hard to get that softball swing mm-hmm. out of the golf swing right. when you get out there on right. the golf course. Yeah, so. The hands need to stay very passive and you just stay very very relaxed through the swing and let your momentum build, let your you know positive swings build up. Those are the kind of questions we'd love to answer for you and those are the kind of tips we'll be talking about all season long here on Tea Time TU. As we said, we're going to be visiting some local golf courses around the summertime, playing the signature holes. We'll be videoing that. We'll be putting together a really cool show for you. You can catch us on Channel 10 here in Tiffin, as well as on the Tiffin University YouTube channel as well. We also got to say a big thanks to Scott and the folks out here at Shell Shuckers for having us out for our initial episode. We'll be coming out here at least every at least every other week, hopefully every week, all depending so. on what our schedules will mm-hmm. entail. But uh, big thanks to Scott and the staff out here for having us out. Uh, I'm excited. Shell Shuckers, great place. Uh, Scott, with it being the new owner, I can't wait to see what he does here. It's one of my favorite restaurants restaurants and I hope a lot of people give it a chance because they'll be very very happy they did again if you'd like more information on Tiffany University golf go to go if you'd like more information on Tiffany University you can go to tiffin.edu for Tiffany University head coach Darby Rogo I'm Russ Snyder voice of the dragons thanks for joining us for this week's episode of tea time to you we'll catch you next week thank you